So we've seen that bifurcation diagrams are a useful geometric device, a type of graph that lets us see all at once the different behaviors a dynamical system might have as a parameter is changed. In this lecture, I'll focus on the phenomena of bifurcations themselves. I think this is an important topic from dynamical systems, particularly for the study of complex systems. Uh, bifurcations aren't as well known or flashy or perhaps exciting as but the butterfly effect or uh, strange attractors, but I think they're important and definitely good, good to know about. Um, so I'll begin making this argument by returning to the logistic equation with Harvest. So here's the logistic equation with a Harvest term. RP times 1 minus p over k, k is the carrying capacity, and then h is the harvest, the number of fish or whatever that are caught every year. And um, before we talk about the bifurcation diagram, just a reminder that the right-hand side of this equation is quite well behaved. This is just an upside-down parabola, this term here, and the h just shifts the whole graph down. So here's what that looked like, say, for h equals 40. And as h gets larger, this graph just slides down like this. But um, this is a smooth function of p, a smooth function of h. It's differentiable, um, very nice, and well-behaved. OK, so as we've seen, the bifurcation diagram looks like this. And here I've just drawn in different colors the two different types of equilibria, or fixed points. So red, this is the stable attractor. And blue is the unstable attractor. So let's think about this in terms of um, fishing in this model population. And H is the fishing rate, the number of fish that we allow be to be caught, or the pounds of fish or whatever, um, every year or, or, or every generation. So when we're down here, we're doing no um, harvest at all. And this red value up here, this is actually, this is the carrying capacity the equilibrium value in the absence of this harvesting. And so then we begin, uh, imagine we discover a lake or some, pe some people arrive there and like, okay, time, time to start fishing and we allow a certain amount of fishing. And um, a little bit of fishing leads to a small decrease in the steady state population, the equilibrium population of the lake. And that makes sense. It would be surprising if anything else happened. You start fishing, there'll be, there'll be less fish, but maybe not such a big deal. There's a growth rate, you know, you, you, you kill some fish, the fish grow back towards their carrying capacity. They don't actually hit the carrying capacity, but they come pretty close. Down here, this unstable equilibrium has gotten a little bit larger, and that's not surprising at all. If, say, we're catching um, 40 fish a year, but there are only um, 20 fish in, in the lake, then we're not going to be able to sort of re recover because we'll have killed all the fish, and so that population would move down. So if you start harvesting, um, you start this fishing, one can imagine that, that um, if there's so if, if you start off with very few fish, you'll just kill them all. Okay, so that's um, seems reasonable. So let's continue thinking about what's going along, what's going on up here on this curve. So maybe we've allowed fishing up to this rate, and things are going pretty well, and so a bunch of people ask to fish more because fishing is fun or it's lucrative or people are hungry and they want to eat fish, and so we allow a bunch more fishing, and then the population, uh, the, the steady state population decreases a little bit more, but not that much. And all along this curve, a small increase in the fishing rate gives rise to a small decrease in the equilibrium population. Seems to make really good sense. And then we, we keep going, maybe we're out here, and we decide, okay, let's do a little bit more fishing. Things have been going well. And we allow a bit more fishing, and all of a sudden we end up over here. So if H, the, the fishing rate, is this high, um, then there is no steady state population, and the fish population would just crash. It would go right down to zero. But the thing to note is, is uh, well, okay, so a couple things. The steady state, this red value, 
you might think that the equilibrium value would approach h smoothly. But instead, it just sort of falls off a cliff. You can have a, a, a stable equilibrium here, but you can't have any stable equilibria for a population less than this. Right? So we might think that this red curve should kind of go down and touch this, but the red curve just blinks out of existence right here. It's important to note that in this fishing scenario, we have control over H. That's something that could be set by policy and, and, and could, be, could be measured. We just, watch, you know, just count how many fish people catch. But what this equilibrium population is wouldn't be observable, typically. Um, there might be some clues that the fish suddenly get hard to catch, but maybe right there, the population is this is still pretty large. You could imagine being out here, close to the point where you fall off the this this cliff, and the fish suddenly die with a small increase in age. Still a lot of fish, and so they still could be pretty easy to catch. It might not be really uh, might not be immediately noticeable. So. The lesson here, the thing that I think is important, is that we can have a, a very sudden transition, and mathematically an instantaneous transition, and it's a, in a sense a discontinuous one where the population would go from an equilibrium value here all the way down to zero. There wouldn't, there's no equilibrium value in between these two points. Um, So we have this discontinuous behavior, even though this function is continuous and smooth as can be. So even a continuous, a differentiable function that varies as a function of age can have this sort of this potentially disastrous and discontinuous behavior. Um, one more possible scenario to note. So imagine we're, we're moving along this curve, we're somewhere along here. And we don't really, but we don't realize it because we can't really see this curve. So we just increase the fishing rate a little bit more and we start to plummet down here, right? So the population is here. We allow too much fishing. The population starts to die off. Maybe suddenly, you know, people aren't catching fish. We notice the fish stock is decreasing. And so the logical thing to do then might be to cut back on fishing. And maybe we cut back on fishing a lot. So that would move us back here. But even doing that, once you're down here and the population starts to crash, if you um, cut back on fishing even you know, by a factor of 50%, you still might be in this region where the fish are still going to die. So once you sort of move over this edge, you might need to reduce fishing entirely or almost entirely in order to get back here and creep back up to, the, to this equilibrium value. So again, I don't think people actually use these models to, you know, in a numerical way to uh, understand uh, how fisheries behave. But this does suggest that you can have a sudden collapse, that a stable point can disappear suddenly and without warning. And it turns out that that's a fairly generic feature of differential equations, even ones that are smooth and continuous like this one.